Hold on to your hard drives. Today's lecture is one of the hardest and most esoteric concepts that I'll be talking about in these lectures. It's not for the faint of heart. Yale Law School professor Wesley Newcomb Hofeld, before dying at the tender age of 39, developed a new field of analytic jurisprudence in the 1910s with the publication of two articles that set out a framework that sought to capture the fundamental elements of legal relations. In the introduction to Hofeld's theory, in this introduction to Hofeld's theory, uh, I'll be focusing on the distinction be between a Hofeldian right and a Hofeldian privilege. Uh, this distinction is captured in the following table. Uh, to demystify this non-intuitive framing, let me turn to an extended description uh, by Duke professor Madeline Morris uh, from her article, The Structure of Legal Entitlements. And this is quoting uh, her, uh, her article. We can use the example of a parking garage uh, to work through uh, this distinction. The parking garage in my office building sells both general and reserved sparking, par space monthly parking passes. A general pass allows its holder to enter the garage, search for a parking space, and park it, uh, in it unless the garage is full, in which case the general pass holder will have to wait for a space. The reserved space pass, by contrast, allows its holder to park in a particular parking space and prohibits all others from parking in that space. Suppose that I like to park in parking space X because it's closest to my office. If I have a reserved space pass to park in space X, then I have a Hofeldian right to that space. You have a corresponding duty not to park in that space. If, on the other hand, I have a general monthly parking pass, then I have a Hofeldian privilege to park in space X. I may park in space X if it is empty, but I'm not guaranteed access to it when I arrive. You may have already parked in SpaceX, since you have no duty to refrain from and indeed have the privilege of parking there. Thus, when I have a Hofeldian right, I have a right to enjoy the object of that entitlement, parking in SpaceX, in a way that involves your having a corresponding duty, your duty not to park in parking SpaceX. By contrast, when I have a Hofeldian privilege, I have the privilege to enjoy or attempt to enjoy the object of that entitlement, parking in SpaceX, but without your having a corresponding duty. You have no duty to refrain from parking in that space. Hofeld notes that a duty is the opposite of a privilege. Your duty not to park in SpaceX is the opposite of a privilege to park in the space. Hence, the absence of a privilege to park there constitutes the presence of a duty not to park there. And conversely, the absence of a duty not to park there constitutes the presence of a privilege to park there. Therefore, my having a Hofeldian right to park in my reserved space X means that you have no corresponding privilege uh, to park in that space. While my having a Hofeldian privilege to park in that space would mean that you do have a corresponding privilege to park there. The difference between Hofeldian rights and privileges thus turns on whether the other party holds a privilege. If the other party has a privilege, then I possess only a privilege. If the other party has no privilege, but rather a duty, then what I have is a right." Unquote. For Hofeld, what would voting be, a right or a privilege? Who would be subject to its jural correlative? 